Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to No Man's Sky Beyond. And as you can see right behind me, we're going to be building this wonderful repeater system that's actually much more simpler than it looks, but it's kind of complex and can break every so often. Uh, just because of how you do it, it's actually a two second delay repeater. So as you can see, the lights are ticking by. And this is based off of JC Hysteria's version of a repeater, which is this one, which uses the auto switchers. These auto switchers basically are dead. They don't work in the normal game unless you like somehow save edit them in. So because they're not in the normal game, we're not going to go with these, at least for the time being. When they come back into the game, we can come back to doing stuff with this. I wish these were in there, but they're not. So we're going to have to go with the not, so to speak. So each one of these connections, if you kind of look at how they're connected up, they're actually a knot connector. So this is what we're going to be building. So stay tuned in just a moment. We'll be talking about that. All right, folks, I'm here on the creative camera. That way you can kind of see what a knot detector does. So a knot detector essentially works like this. So you have an input, which just happens to be a wall switch. Currently, the wall switch is turned on. When the wall switch goes in an inverter, this is the main modifier that's coming into the inverter. Because the modifier is stronger, so to speak, than the input output, it overrides what's going on between the input and output. So this essentially toggles the switch to be off. And so that's why our light over here is currently turned off. And if you want to know how to essentially turn the light back on, essentially you have to make a brand new knot switch, as you can see down there. And I'm going to do that right here for you. We're just going to keep the light where it's at, and then we're just going to fiddle with some extra switches. We're going to add a second inverter here, just so you can see how this works out. So if you notice, that top switch actually, instead of going where it goes to the light, it now goes and becomes the new modifier for this. This bottom piece still goes and gets attached to a wonderful battery, which I'll explain in a minute. And then this here goes to our light, which then turns it on. So in a sense, I, what I did here is I created a knot switch first, followed by a second knot switch, which then powered the light. And so that way you can override the knot switch and it becomes almost like an and switch or something like that, so to speak. So you need that and this in order for the, the light to actually turn on. So for example, if I did turn this off, what will happen to the light will actually turn itself off. It is kind of an interesting setup and this is what gives us our wonderful blinking pattern that you see down here. And it blinks pretty slow and it's pretty reasonable. I have yet to figure out how to speed this up to make this a bit more like this one. I'd rather have it sped up and I'd rather find some cool creative ways to try to get this sped up. If you notice the light in here, this is all ticking at one second each. If I scroll back over this way, you'll notice the lights here do not tick at one second each. It actually takes one, two, one, two before each light turns off. So every single light in here is two seconds each. So if you set up a, a gateway this way, you can actually do two seconds of anything you want to be able to do between each two sets of lights here. So let's go ahead and build this up here on the top wall. Let me delete everything and get myself started. We're going to leave this, of course, because that's important, right? All right, folks, so for the sake of helpfulness, I'm going to actually reverse the order, much like how I did this one here, and I reversed the order of how these things appeared, just so that we can see some differences in how things go. Um, I'm also going to try to show you how to build this one, too. I'll do that as well. First things first, we need power. Of course, in order to get any kind of power, you need to go to power on your um, bar here, power and industry, go to power, and then try to search for preferably one battery, and preferably one solar panel. From there, take a wire from the solar panel, hook it up into the battery. Don't worry that it's night, because eventually by the time daytime comes, it's gonna come and turn this all on. Take the wire that's existing from the battery, go up and go put it wherever you wanna put it. So we're gonna put it there for the sake of it. And if you notice that down here, this wire goes through the entire system. And what we're gonna end up happening is we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven inverters and all the inverters are going to be facing one direction so that way we're consistent on how we're going to do this okay so all the inverters are going to be facing this way so that way everything can kind of interconnect with everything else so if you notice how the first one's wired up you can see how that wired up there we're going to be facing this one going this way and then we're going to put 11 inverters so two three four five six seven eight make room for some more nine ten and we'll just squeeze another one in here, 11. Okay, good. So if you notice the lights are skipped on to each every other inverter, I'll explain why that is. I'm gonna have tie in some lights in here and you'll see what happens there. So we're gonna put lights, one, two, three, four, five, six. We're gonna put six lights starting from the beginning and then ending with the one that's at the end here. It should be every other. Let's see how it goes. So to get the light, by the way, you have to go all the way back over here where tech is. Go over to decoration, find lights, and if, for the sake of this argument, I'm just going to do a different set of lights for each one of these, just so that way you can see 
the differences with the lighting in here. And so I'm, all I'm doing is just selecting a different color, rotating it around with R. I'm sorry, rotating it around with E, yeah, R, and then just kind of putting it down every other. I put this one in the wrong plate, every other. And then I'm going to get two more light, do the same thing, one here and one at the very end. And then I'll show you what happens if I put an extra light in here in the middle of these two guys. We'll just do the same color here, just so you can start to see some differences of what starts to happen. And we're going to keep these lights here. Don't do this in yours if you want to make a repeating pattern that looks like the one down there. I'm going to show you what these lights look like when they're actually hooked up. Okay, so if you notice, I have no buttons attached to this. There's not even a single button. So we're going to talk about how that works. First up now is to wire the entire bottom together. All you have to do is connect every bottom to the same power lead. So go back up. Go, oh boy, build camera, come back. I'm not done with you. Back up to the build camera. There we go. Go back to tech. Go back to power and energy, power and electrical wiring. The other way you could do this is hold control and move it over to electrical wiring, but I don't think you want to have your pinky on the control button forever. So just take this input that came from the solar panel, the batteries, and take this, roll it down, take this line and plug it in. So for every one of these, you have to just do a stop and kind of go back up and plug it in. Let me come back at you when this is all wired up here. So this planet is a little tiny bit further than the other planet. So it's going to take a little bit before this thing gets powered and the sun comes up. So we're going to give it some time. So my entire bottom row here is wired up. As you can see, it's connected to every single inverter on the row. And I'm not using a single auto switcher for this. So keep that in mind. Next up, what we're going to do is we're going to wire this just like this. We're going to go ahead and wire all the light next. And then we're going to come down to the wires and where they're all supposed to go after that. We'll be talking about that in just a second. So let me get every light wired up and I'll come right back at you once every light is wired up and turned on. I'm going to show you the difference between these inside lights that I put in and between the outside lights. And we're going to show you the difference. So for you guys, all you have to do is wire the upper light. Don't bother with the lower light. Oh good, the sun's coming up. That thing should be getting power now. It is awesome. Okay, all the lights are wired up. Next up, if you notice the bottom screen there, you've got a power line that's coming in off of the first light and going down into the inverter modifier. And then it goes up and comes out and comes down and goes up and comes out. And we're just gonna keep following that pattern all the way through. So your input again, it's over here on this side, and we're going to be explaining what that last modifier is going to do in a second. But we're going to start at the very top of the light. We're going to wire it going down, and you can see that shuts that guy off. And then we're going to come up to the next top one, wire it down, top, modifier, top, modifier. And just keep doing this all the way until you get through the entire set of lights here. Okay, so what happened here is it turned off every other inverter. So every other inverter gets turned off, and every other inverter stays on. And so it's a really nifty deep feature that you get with this repeating single. Now, if you notice how the repeating single, this last upper one goes up and comes around and goes over. So the last one only gets powered when this last light gets powered. And it eventually makes its way all the way around onto this side and will not turn off until this particular light turns off. All right, so let's go ahead and wire that very last one. We're just gonna take the top one, the top one from the very end. We're just gonna kind of come out, go up, and just kind of roll it all the way over to the other side and then come down and basically just connect it right into the modifier. And if you notice, see what starts to happen here? It's the bottom row lights turn on, the upper row lights turn off. Now, if you wanted to do something really nifty with this, you can actually do some fun stuff with the way the lights are lighted up the way it is. Now, if you want to make it a true repeater, take off either the top row or take off the bottom row to make this loop happen, all right? Because if you don't, the lights are pretty much always going to stay on. The only way to make that stay off is to eventually turn this little toggle right here off. All right, guys, if you kind of watch how the lights blink here, you'll notice how the lights are blinking here. If you watch the one over there down at the bottom, the um, wonderful um, auto switchers down here, and then you compare it with the lights up here, you'll notice that this, the auto switchers are one tick delay. And if you just watch those one ticks and notice how they're ticking actually one tick per thing. So each set, this one to this one is a one tick delay. This one to this one's a one tick delay and so on. So each inverter is one tick each. And so all I did by doing this is when you do this and you skip over this guy by deleting this light right here and you get rid of that light and you get rid of this light and you get rid of this light and so on and so on and so on. What you end up with is you end up with a two second delay instead of one second. So this happened to go one and then eventually make his way two and then four and then six, 
eight and so on right and that's how you get your delay setting right just by putting two of these so if you want to extend the delay even more right and just put more and more and more of these and eventually you your sync will get delayed all right guys if you work with the wiring quotations if you do it just right if you notice the top and bottom right here you can actually change the speed a little bit so these ones are working off of a two second delay so to speak and this is just a period shift over like a third second shift and so you can also do that just by changing the point of view of the delay and that's just something fun you could do with this and just change shifting so that we have two different sets of lights doing two different things and if you wire those two guys up you have blinking lights like that and you have blinking lights like this so you could actually have a wonderful array of different light blinking different light speeds and whatnot all i did was start this up after this one had gone and so that way the light did two different things it's just a matter of just changing out the um when the when this particular wire here hits you might have to reset the whole system via this and then once it kind of goes through and shuts itself off and then just kind of put a new line over here and that will just change the delay there all right let me show you i'm gonna get rid of this guy because i was just trying something out real quick i just wanted to know if it actually would do something with this extra inverter put in so i'm just going to delete that little inverter so all i did was turn off the lights by basically disconnecting the plug here and disconnecting this here and so what we're going to do is we're going to try to attempt to start this off opposite of the one that you see on the bottom right there right so the bottom's already full up we're going to go ahead and plug this back in all the lights are on we're going to wait for all the lights to go off on the bottom before we connect this guy and then you should see a little bit of difference there. All right, there we go. And we should be going alternate. We're not. Okay, it's going at the same beat. Let me try that again. All right, all the lights are on. We're going to wait for that one to go on as well. We're going to try to go alternate just by slight interval shift. It's a little tricky to try to grab it. Um, you have to kind of catch it midway through the, through the swap. So you know it goes one, two, one, two, right? So you have to kind of do it at one, two swap. We're going to wait for this thing to do a thing. And then we're going to try to attempt to do it. So it goes one. And then two, we're going to try to grab it on the two. There we go. I think we got it. And there we go. We got the lights now shifting on a completely different period. And depending on where you put that two, so to speak, if you put it way over here, if you put it somewhere in the middle, you can actually change the duration of when you start these lights off and when you finish the lights off. You can see there's a lot of practical applications with how you use this. It's kind of really fun and really interesting to see how this plays off. So like already the top's completely light dead, so to speak, where the bottom's already starting the ending of its light. And you can see we shifted the period just a little bit and so you can actually even do that much like how you did this one and how you have created the alternating light here you actually created a set of alternating lights as well here just by simply shifting the period and all you have to do is just delete this power line right here delete this one and then plug this guy back in and then before you connect this decide where your other power is going to be at and then just kind of count where you want this to turn on so if you notice you can see it actually running you can see which line is turning on as you can see by the lines that are changing color here and you can see the ones that are changing color that determined where the lights are at. And then you could just do the same over here. That creates a lot of practical application for you guys. Okay, folks, so we're going to be taking these repeaters here and we're going to be building the auto switcher version. So this is really for the people that are playing on um, creative because only in creative can you get these auto switchers. Anywhere else, you would have to get it um, via the inverter set that we've shown you earlier in the earlier setup here. In the meantime, we're going to be doing this with the auto switchers. So what we're going to be doing is I've got a line. If you guys remember how this works, you take your solar panel or your biofuel reactor, you plug it into a battery and then just run a line to wherever you're going to be starting the build here. And from there, we're going to be going over to tech we're going to be going over to power and industry again and we're going to be going up into our switches we're going to be looking for the one that is called autos i can't get that one the one is oh my god stop it the one that is called switches and then go over to auto switch and these are these are the ones we're going to be looking for we're going to put everything in the exact same order so we're just going to be focusing our auto switch to be rotated in this direction we're just going to do six of them one two three four, five, six. You can just see the effect easier on six, okay? That's why that's really the only reason we're doing six. We're gonna go back over to the beginning to decorations. We're gonna go over to lights, uh, just because we want to have some lights in here that work at least on the wall. I'm just gonna do all the same color. I'm not gonna worry so much about the lights here, exactly how I'm putting them, as long as I got six lights here. And then we're gonna go back over to tech. We're gonna go up to power and industry. We're gonna start doing our wiring and I'll come up with a button in, at the very end there. So this here, it's gonna get plugged in going down the bottom, plugged to the first one, plugged to the second one, all, all just like how we did the inverters, just plug everything straight in on the bottom. Once we get these all plugged up, we're gonna plug in the light next. The inverters and the 
others which is almost look the same, almost act the same, almost do the same. But as you can tell with the blinking lights here, as you can tell with these lights and with those lights, the in, the power switches over there on the right above my head actually, um, those ones do a one second delay, while the inverters way over there on the other side of the board there, they do a two second delay. So it's very odd how that works and how they all blink and how they do what they're supposed to do. So we're gonna go ahead and set this up. I got all the wires for this. I got all the wires on the bottom. Next up, all we have to do is take this top portion of the auto switcher connected to the modifier here. Take again, output to modifier. That's all we're doing, output to modifier for the entire road, the entire section. And that way it will match up with the bottom board there. And then what we do at the final output, we just kind of come out a little bit, go up. We're just going on the wall just because it's easier to see. Go up and over, and then we're going to plug that guy into this modifier here. However, there is a little, a little, a little conundrum. So we're just going to unplug this for a second. We're going to go ahead and go down over here. This is where we're going to get our switch. Go back to button, grab our button, and then we're going to plug our button into the power line on one side. This is in the wrong place. Don't do that. We're gonna plug our power line into one side of the button. We're gonna take the other side of the button. As you notice, we crossed over and we connected the two right here. And then we're gonna go ahead. I'm gonna show you what happens if you have the system already pre-connected like this. It's gonna be a little hard for me to get up there, but I should be able to reach it from the grassy area. Yes, I can. Okay, it's gonna be a little weird. So if I do this whole thing set up like this with it all plugged in, it should work like it's doing right now and it should do its little cycle. Once in a while, if you do it wrong, what will happen is it will accidentally set this up in threes. So if it does kind of undo things. The plus also with the button is you can actually remove the button as soon as you get this thing powered and activated. You don't even need that. Um, every once in a while that will happen and the game hasn't quite fixed how to fix that yet so I'm just showing you that that does happen so if it does happen just put the button back in do the thing again and repower it and just redo the wires and just kind of get the thing powered so that way you can just eventually delete the button so I'll show you again I'm going to power it up again we'll see what happens this time when I power on the engine for that button it does work okay good excellent so we got this thing set up and now the sun's coming up so we can definitely see it and we're going to delete the button there we go now it's good and now we can just delete the rest of the line that we just don't really need I whoa i just deleted everything okay good job me let's go repair the damage Okay, now that I put that wall back and it's all back in place again, I want to show you something. You remember how I did this one in a different set? And by the way, this is working backwards, obviously, and it's not working at the same speed. And they're both going at different speeds here. So you can do the same thing with the repeaters as well. As long as you start the repeater at a different time that the other one's on. So say you wait till the thing goes all the way shift over to three or four. And then you turn on that one. As you can see, I waited until this thing was one, two, three four and then I did it on the fifth one just to show you that you can shift the light and you can actually make the light shift if you want them to be at the same time just turn on the lights at the same time if you don't have light for these or anything like that just at least to put a light there just so you can see what's happening and then delete the light later and hopefully it won't delete the auto switch like it did all right guys so if you like this episode please do like subscribe leave me comments um tell me what you guys think again I have to thank JC Hysteria for putting this version together and I took this version and I said well how can I make this work without the auto switcher since we don't have auto switchers in normal so here's how you can do it with inverters and by the way in case you want to know could you do this with one inverter no you can't because it won't work it won't do the repeating factor like it's doing here it's going to end up doing something very different it's going to end up doing that sort of setup much more so than this sort of setup all right guys we'll see you in the next one thanks for watching have a good one bye so you gotta wonder you gotta wonder really about pineapples this guy looks like a little mini pineapple i don't know what to say about you let's get you under under some light there Look at this, this guy's so adorable. Makes me wonder. I wonder if it can name you or something like that, you know what I mean? I know you have a name according to this. Your name's Offer Food. <laughs> but yeah, you look really interesting in this wonderful planet.